I'm Jaylena and this is my bus, The Peach. And I just finished completely gutting her and remodeling her. And we are gonna take you on a tour of The Peach today. And she's actually gonna be up for sale. So make sure you check out that listing if you're interested. We'll start on the exterior. So she is a 1993 GMC Chevy Vandura van. She has about 140,000 miles on her, not quite there yet. In the last two years, I've done tons of maintenance on her. I have, she has a new alternator a new battery, all kinds of things. And I also just did her head gasket. So brand new head gaskets installed and she is running like a champ, really happy with uh, the engine right now. I do have new LED headlights that work great. And then also, if you notice, the GMC is kind of that peachy color. I did use resin for that. That was done about a year and a half, two years ago, and it's still holding up color wise, great. So I do have all terrain wild peak tires on her. The probably only have a couple hundred miles on them. They were just installed, I think about a year ago. Pretty much brand, close to brand new. They're snowflake rated, so they are great in the snow. I also have over here the muffler for the diesel heater, as you can see. So it does have a diesel heater and that's what that muffler is. So for the windows, resealing wise, I just went through and I caulked it like crazy and I don't have any leaks. So I didn't take the windows out, just re them and that worked fine. And then here we have your water fill. So you just fill your water tank right there. It's a 12 gallon water tank. And then we have our gas. And in case you didn't notice on the top, I did remove those lights and I put schoolie.com flasher deletes in. And I think it looks better, it's cleaner and it prevents leaks from those lights that often do leak. So on the roof, I used elastomeric roof coating so that it kind of helps with the heat and stuff. And then on the body of the bus, it is oil-based paint. The mural was done by my friend Allie and she did an amazing job. All of that paint is also oil-based paint. Obviously, buses have butterfly doors and I had it like that for a really long time. During this remodel, I decided to do the Isaac's Schoolie home door conversion. So it acts as a normal door and it works so much better. Uh, before, the do butterfly doors like to kind of stay together a little bit and it was just really hard to get in and out. So now it's much, much easier. So just like a normal door, normal keys, and it opens like a normal door. It's great. So now let's go ahead and head inside. So this is your entryway and I have cedar in the back. We do have aluminum trim around all the front. And then you have your little uh, normal just rugs that I cut to size. And the rest of the wall is also cedar. Welcome to the cab of the bus. Let's talk about all the things that I did in here. I actually had a smaller mirror up here that had a crack down the middle and we just happened to have this really big extra one. So I installed this and it's great because as with an addition to those mirrors, it takes away that like blind spot and you can see through these windows really, really good when you're driving, which I think is awesome. Um, I also painted the top here blue. I left the original yellow uh, on the, around the sides and on the door. It goes with the color scheme and it gives you that little bit of original school bus feel and I absolutely love it. I also repainted all of the dash, the gray, and down on the floor I did Raptor liner and it's super durable and I'm really happy with that choice. So above we have a shelf that, like an inserted shelf that I did and then I also added this nook here for hanging keys and whatever else you're going to put in there and over here this isn't storage it is just like your base to all the electrical for the actual school bus and that is it for the front of the cap down here we have our diesel heater and it will heat up this entire space absolutely no problem above that we have a little storage cubby that i usually keep the curtains, the blackout curtains for the front area and the door. And next to that, we move into the kitchen. So you have this cool little bottle opener here, some um, paper towel rack, some other hooks here. And then we just have a foot pump that we can take the sink insert out. And it's just a foot pump, manual foot pump. It's the reason I wanted to do that is because 
it's less power and it's also less water so the countertop is butcher block and right now i just have it sealed with food grade oil and you can always put something else on that if you want we have curtains that go all the way across in the back and then we have open shelving on top there is a usb port here and then these are the this is the light switch for the lights up top and then going under the sink I have a trash can and then we have another cubby, a cubby for storage for cooking. We have just a camp stove that is butane or propane. So it works with both because oftentimes when you're on the road, you'll find that one is often harder to find than the other. So th with this, you have both options. And then up top, we just have our silverware. Moving on, we have the Ice Coat Dual Refrigerator. I don't remember how big this one is. I think it's a 67 quart, but we have this side is the freezer and this side is the refrigerator. And underneath that, we have a huge drawer for dishes or what have you. And then also this side is another storage area for whatever you wanna put in there. Welcome to the bedroom. So up top, we have a skylight. It doesn't open, it's just a normal skylight. And some fake greenery wrapped around that and over here tons of overhead storage and then we have a big huge storage bin at the end of the bed and that also does have a 110 outlet with a usb and then 12 volt usb plugs also which as you can see we have a fairy vibe going on we have twinkle lights that run all the way in the back and then at night you can see them better but they do run uh, alongside back behind this open shelf as well. This is an eight inch memory foam mattress. One of the most comfortable mattresses I've ever slept on. Very sad to see it go. And these comforters are from Target and just normal pillows, more overhead shelving over here. This one's a little smaller than this side just because it does go over the couch. And this one does extend a little further out. I usually keep electronics up here. And then we also have this bin up here if you want to use that for whatever. And last but not least, I do have a max air fan uh, above the bed. It works great on those really hot days when you just want to lay down. You could turn the fan on and it really does a great job of keeping you cool. I've witnessed this personally in the very hot, humid summer heat of Tennessee. Moving on to our couch area. So this acts as a couch, a day bed. It is long enough for someone to sleep on. I hand sewed these cushion or this cushion cover so you could take it off and wash it anytime you want to. Uh, all these pillows are also removable and you can wash those as well. And there, it does open up. I have a little handle here. There's a ton of storage underneath here. So you can put whatever you want. There's plenty of room. I think a, a paddleboard might even fit under here. I don't know, but there's a lot of storage. And then over here, as you can see, we have another 110 USB outlet here, 12 volt USB outlet here. And then we have our control panel for the inverter. Next to that, we have the DC to DC monitor. So this is all uh, cedar tongue and groove. Up the front of the bed is all cedar tongue and groove. And then this is a macrame curtain that leads underneath the bed, which takes us to the electrical which we'll get into in just a moment so with the battery we have a 12 volt 230 amp hour plus lithium battery which is perfect for any rv scenario experience peace of mind with an a level life po4 battery cells which are free from mercury lead and other toxic substances abs flame retardant plastic and ip65 waterproof level provide protection against fire and water the intelligent 200a bms board prevents overcharging over for discharging and short circuiting, ensuring a safer and more reliable battery. You can charge the battery with solar, wind, or tidal power, supporting an environmentally friendly society. With these lifetime batteries, they offer price to lifetime ratio of 21 cents per deep cycle and last up to 10 years with 4,000 full discharge charge cycles. Save $1.21 per cycle compared to the lead acid batteries, which only last 200 to 500 cycles. Plus, no regular maintenance is 
required, so that's saving you time and effort. This Litime battery is 50% more powerful than the similar sized lead acid batteries offering a low self discharge rate and minimal capacity loss. At 5.07 amp hours per pound, the Litime 12 volt 230 amp hour plus LifePo 4 battery boasts three times the energy density and a lighter weight compared to the lead acid batteries. Benefit from longer lasting power and increased portability thanks to the tier one A level prismatic LifePo 4 battery cells in a four cell series configuration. So with all of that being said, this battery, though I haven't used it very long, when I posted about it that I was using this particular battery, I had multiple people reach out and say that it's a great setup, that they have the same exact setup with the Renogy and the Lifetime 230 amp hour battery. And they said they've been using it with absolutely no problems and I just thought that that was a really cool, good thing to hear. So apparently this is a great setup. So we have a 40 amp battery charger for shore power also. And then we obviously have a 1000 watt inverter. Underneath that we have our Renogy um, 50 amp DC to DC MPP charge controller. So I could charge it off the solar and the house battery and it also charges the car battery once this battery is full. On the roof I have two 100 watt solar panels and over here we have the kill switch and up here we have our fuse block which is our 12 volt distribution. So when I did this build I completely gutted it down to the bones and I treated any rust, anything like that, did the Rust-Oleum prevention on that. And then I also insulated with one inch pink foam board on the floor and we have life proof flooring over that. I used two inch foam board insulation on the walls and um, I think R13 fiberglass insulation on the ceiling. We have a toilet. So this is a Rec Pro toilet that has the diverter in here. So you can go one or two. This is obviously brand spanking new. So you do have the option to go to the bathroom and it's portable and you can just place that under the bed and it's out of the way. This is the geyser shower that I have that you can use as your outdoor shower and it has these replaceable scrubs that you can get. So if you want to have one for cleaning your bikes or any outdoor activity equipment, you can use one for that. And then you can also use one for yourself. And then you can also, I think there's just a normal water spigot to have water come out, but you fill this up and I think it, don't quote me on this, but I think for one gallon, it'll last you 15 minutes. So it definitely saves on water. And this plugs into a 12 volt outlet and so this one it doesn't have uh the heat in it so what you do is fill fill it up half the way with cold water boil water and pour it in there and it makes it warm and then once the water is warm so it doesn't burn you it lets you know and then you can use it however you want Best life changed my entire life. I purchased this bus because honestly, it's all that I could afford. And although it wasn't necessarily my dream rig, it definitely turned into my dream rig. I drove across the country in this bus with nothing but my belongings. It was not built out. It wasn't even painted. And I'm sure I got some crazy looks because of it. But look at my girl now. Absolutely stunning. So beautiful. I cannot wait to see the journey that the peach embarks on from this point on. Bus Life truly changed my life and I can't wait to pass that torch on to somebody else because it will change their lives too. The peach is and always will be my baby, but I know that we are both ready for the next chapters in our lives and I can't wait to see that through. 
So thank you so much for watching this tour. I hope you enjoyed it and make sure that you stick around and subscribe if you want to see more. I promise you this is not the last of my personal adventures, just the last of my adventures with the peach. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you consider subscribing. And I cannot wait to share with you what's next in our lives, what's next for our journeys. It's going to be pretty crazy. Stay tuned.